So we'll begin our tour with a little bit of background. We already talked in the first module about the sort of architectural design pattern of client-server versus peer-to-peer. -peer. And remember, the idea of an architectural design pattern, or really any design pattern, is to capture common elements that characterize a lot of instances of a problem class and sort of try to capture those in a structure or an organization that essentially makes it easier to solve other problems of that class, right? Sort of a, a reusable blueprint, um, not exactly in code necessarily, but at the conceptual structural level. And one of the ones that we're going to look at next is called model view controller. So to motivate why this is important, let's start by looking back at Sinatra, where life is very simple when you're doing a web app. There is a user sitting at a browser. The browser issues a request. Some URI is the result of that request. And there's an HTTP server that receives that raw request. It parses the HTTP headers and the route. And it passes that on to the app server, which invokes Sinatra. Sinatra identifies, ideally, a matching route somewhere in app.rb. Remember that we had blocks of code that begin with things like get with a string or post with a string. And there could be parameters embedded in there that, that Sinatra will parse out. So Sinatra sort of matches up what action that incoming URI is supposed to correspond to. And it lets the code run with for that action. There's usually a block of Ruby that is associated with it. And that's how things happen. And then that block of code, among other things, can say, here's a view that you should render, a view template that is HTML with some embedded Ruby. That's the thing that gets set back at the HTTP response. So this works pretty well for very simple web apps like the ones that we have used Sinatra to do, like the Tic-Tac-Toe app. But most real-life SaaS apps manipulate a lot of kinds of things, like resources. So we've been using the movie app, Rotten Potatoes, as kind of a placeholder for this. Even a simple app like that deals with multiple kinds of things. A movie is a kind of thing. A user who logs in is a kind of thing. A review that somebody might write about a movie is a kind of thing. So is there a better way to organize a more complex app that has more kinds of things as opposed to just this simple framework? And that's the motivation for a model view controller, which is a design pattern that comes out of the HCI literature. It is a way of thinking about the organization of apps that have an interactive user component. So the three components are the controller, the model, and the view, schematically speaking. The model is kind of where the action is, if you will. It's both the state, like what is the, what is the information that has to be stored about the model in order for the program to do its job, and logic, what operations are allowed on that model state. The view is the thing that lets users see and interact with the model. Now, the view could be a command line. The view could be a mouse and window sort of graphical interface. The view could be virtual reality headset. But the view is the part that, in some sense, has direct contact with the user. And the controller mediates interactions <clears throat> between the view and the model logic. So for example, the controller might update the view when the state of the model has changed in some interesting way. Or if the user does something to stimulate the model, the controller's job is to sort of figure out what the user did and translate that into calls to operations on the model logic that do the right thing. Now, this is a structural pattern, which means it doesn't say anything about how or where the model state is stored. It doesn't say anything about the technology used or the nature of the connections among the model view and the controller. So as I said, the view could be as simple as a terminal with a command line. It could be something exotic. Uh, the way that the controller and the view communicate. They could be different classes within the same program. They could be different programs that are talking over a network service type interface. So this is just a way of thinking about how to organize the things in the app.